Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Mayor's Gallery, soon to be sporting another official portrait of another Louisville mayor. And I got to say, this is a little awkward, okay? So you got to work with me through this. Uh, I haven't done one of these before. But I really appreciate you all being here to share this uh, unusual moment with me. It, it's my first time to sit for and certainly unveil an official portrait. Uh, I do admit to being a little self-conscious about this, but I think that's part of the process. And it comes with the territory, the role of being the mayor of Louisville, the 50th mayor of this great American city. And yeah, thank you. And like everything else we've done uh, as a city, I couldn't do it uh, without you all. So I want to thank everybody for being here. And as I look out, I see different people that have been with us on different parts of the journey of growing our city. And originally this was going to be a ceremony for about 20 people or so. But, uh, you know, as it turns out, we said, no, let's have more people than 20 people here come. So I really appreciate this. I, I want to thank my family uh, for being here. They're sitting over here looking good. My sister, Lynn. My mom, Mary Lee. Thank you. My wife, Dr. Alexandra Gerasimides, the first lady of Louisville. With the people that are certainly have higher priority than me, and that is her two granddaughters, Penny, thank you. And Sophia, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and then our, my daughter Lainey is here representing her siblings, George and Nick and Mary, who are not here in town. My mother-in-law, this is Yaya. Okay, so, you know, I'm, uh, you've seen the movie My Big Fat Greek Wedding before, so that movie was patterned after my life. <laughs> and, and in that movie, you know, you have the Yaya. And so Penny calls this Yaya over here Big Yaya. Okay, so we appreciate you guys very much. So thanks. Thank you, Alex, for everything. Now, uh, today's program, what we're going to do is I'm uh, attempting to say a few opening remarks here, and then Tom Owen is going to share with us uh, some remarks from a historical perspective. And then after that, uh, Carlos Gomez de, de, Fran de San Francisco, excuse me, uh, the, our great artist and friend is going to share a few things about the process. Uh, Tom, of course, Tom Owen was an uh, alderman uh, for the city of Louisville, one of the original council people uh, for us as well, uh, noted historian for the city. And as we were talking about this when I ran into him on a bike ride, not surprisingly, with Tom Owen, uh, we talked a little bit about the history of portraits. And so he knows a lot about this. So we said, okay, uh, Tom, if you would come and share some history with us, we certainly would appreciate it. So please welcome Tom Owen. Well, the image in this old building from 1836, the image in my mind are the hands of 49 others, your predecessors, with their hands on your shoulders and in a line of succession. Um, I will say that the one thing that joined your 49 successors and you are, we are, are the fact that you're white males um, that is the history of the mayor's office in our in our city um, you know we did not have a mayor of Louisville for all of the 244 years of our history in fact just after 50 years in 1828 20 50 years after the beginning of our city we finally got a mayor that's because we had town trustees and then a mayor, and that was John Buckland. John Buckland served one year at a time, and he served six successive one-year terms. There was always the state legislature wanting to uh, tinker with some local interest, tinker with how many terms, how long the terms. You finally get a four-year term in our current 1893 uh, charter for the city so you finally get a four-year term and so it is that we uh, have uh, over these years there have been three mayors who died with their boots or their slippers on um, in fact a couple of them got parks named after them Henry Tyler 
Park and E. Leland Taylor Park. He was the most recent mayor of our city to die with his boots on. In addition to that, some mayors have either been banned from office uh, or have been denied the ability to serve in the office that they were elected to, for crying out loud. Uh, the most, probably the most noted one was Philip Tompert, who just after the Civil War ended was impeached and removed for office, from office um, because of some real tensions between the Board of Aldermen in those days and the mayor himself. And so he was, but he was restored by the Court of Appeals um, a couple of years uh, later. In addition to that, others have been removed because of ele alleged election fraud. And so they were removed by the state court um, and in at least one case uh, was later restored to office. Another person was denied continuing to serve because of tension with the local council, uh, which is now across the street. But nevertheless, um, James F. Speed, at a very tense time in Louisville history, it was a time of uh, ethnic and religious rioting that occurred on August 6, 1855. Well, just months before, James S. Speed claimed that he had another year legitimately in his term, but he was denied by the council to continue to serve. He moved to Chicago and never came back. Uh, and so that was, and you know one of the main reasons that there was tension? He was a Roman Catholic convert. And for the know-nothings, who dominated global politics in the mid-1850s, that was just a kiss of death. And so it is that some have a way of keep on coming back. I mean, our more recent time, Harvey Sloan would be elected and then would come back to the mayor's office. Or the person, Jerry Abramson, would keep on coming back, as you remember. But nevertheless, um, I think the model for our mayor should be Charles D. Jacob. He served three non-consecutive terms as mayor of the city in the 1870s and 1880s. You may have heard of Jacobs Park, now called Iroquois Park, but that's Charles D. Jacob. Served three non-consecutive So you've got several terms in front of you, Mayor, perhaps. <laughs> perhaps, I said. <laughs> and so it is, finally. We come now to this moment, this time, in which the... Uh, there will be the unveiling of the mayor's portrait and with the hands of those 49 successors. Mayors don't choose the circumstances in which they serve. For instance, looking back real quickly, uh, the need for maintaining a steady hand, sometimes in very chaotic times. I give you, for instance, that ethnic religious tension of the mid-1850s where there were three days of rioting in our city and multiple deaths and burning of private property. I also remind you of what it meant for blacks and whites to be divided in a civil war, that an internecine war that went on for four years. And all through that, there was need for leadership during that time. Or in the 1930s, when we had not only a Great Depression that kept on persisting, but we had two-thirds of the inhabited portions of our city either ankle-deep or above your head in icy floodwaters, a need for a steady hand. And so it is that our mayor led at a time in circumstances that were challenging. He began his term with a vision and he carried steadily working on realizing that vision, a quickening of life in the city center, a building of deeper tourism, a effort, beginning effort to try to deal with housing disparities, an effort to reach across the Ninth Street Divide. In the midst of those kinds of visioning and carrying out that vision, he dealt with a rabid pandemic that keeps on dogging our heels. He dealt with the Breonna Taylor and the, Joy and the George Floyd murders and dealt with the 100 day plus of protesting in our city. A steady hand, a vision, 
and in addition to that vision, uh, carrying out of that vision. And that's what brings us here. I know this may be inappropriate, and I am closing, but he reminds me of Dr. Seuss's Horton the Elephant, who said, um, an elephant is faithful 100%. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. I appreciate that. I want to recognize uh, Deputy Mayor Ellen Hessen in the back here, who's ably and faithfully led our city in so many great ways. Thank you, Ellen. So you say, they say, Mayor, you're supposed to get a portrait done. I'm like, really? It's kind of like not my thing. I say, I've got to do it. you got to do it. Well, then who's going to do it? Uh, it's a big process uh, that you go through. And I'm so pleased that uh, Carlos Gamas de Francisco was the chosen artist. Because we have a story. Uh, I met Carlos uh, right after I became mayor, uh, a new citizen uh, to Louisville, a Cuban refugee, uh, with a sparkle in his eye and a kick in his step like few other people that I'd seen. And I said, Carlos, tell me about you. Came to Louisville. As we all know, we're a great resettlement city, a great city of Cuban Americans now. He said, I had $400 in my pocket, and I had to decide what to do with it. So he went to the art supply store, used all $400 of his money as a new American to invest in art supplies because he was trained as an artist in Cuba, and his dream and his vision was to pursue a life of art. And you are a recognized global star in the field of art. He didn't do portraits anymore, uh, but we said, come on, man, we know each other. Why don't you give this a shot? Um, and if you're familiar with Carlos's work, I mean, it's extraordinary in its beauty and its creativity. Uh, and this is my inside joke, but you might get it if you're familiar with his art. I said, I'd love for you to do my portrait as long as you don't have uh, insects flying out of my ears, okay? <laughs> so look up his work and you'll know what I'm talking about here. But I'm just so pleased, uh, Carlos, that you said yes and that uh, we've developed a friendship over the year that's been really valued by me and unique and uh, you're a wonderful American and we're really proud to have you associated with my family and my administration and now through this portrait we'll be linked together for an awful long time to come. So please welcome our great artist, Carlos Gamas de Francisco. Well, thank you everybody for coming. Um, it's an honor for me. Uh, the mayor, he has supported my career since I arrived to Louisville. Uh, 21 years ago, my father came to Louisville. He came uh, from Cuba and he came with no money, no connections and no English. And he had three jobs and he helped the whole family to come from Cuba. We were, we were trying to get a better life and we all came. So I came 13 years ago. I remember I came with, with almost any money. I spent it the first day I was in the state and I said, what should I do now? I need to find a job or I need to make a living as an artist. This is not a, I don't have a, a second plan. So after a few months, I was the artist in residence at the Mohammed Ali Center and that's how I met the mayor Fisher and he has supported uh, my career since then. Um, he always came to my shows, and um, so it's, a, it's an honor. Thank you for that. And when, so in, the, in these 13 years, I, I've been working very hard uh, to pursue my dreams. And I remember when I arrived, I saw a sign that with Mohammed Ali's face, and it says, Louisville, the city of opportunity. And Louisville is, is the city of opportunity. So we all, um, we are all different, like we are people from different cultures. When my father came to the States, he said that there were not too many uh, possibilities for, for immigrants because there, it wasn't built for immigrants. But then, then when I came here, everything started changing. Now we have maybe about 20,000 Cubans that came. Uh, there are people from different countries like Russia, like Vietnam, Bhutan. And so this is a, a, a cosmopolitan city. That's the way I see it. And then, um, so when Mayor Fisher told me that he wanted me to paint his portrait, 
I was uh, very uh, honored. I feel like, okay, I, will, I need to do my best. That's, uh, uh, is, I know how important this is for him and it's all his legacy. Uh, so when I did it, I tried to pay attention to everything he has done in all these years. And he has done a lot, especially for immigrants and for people from different races, genders. And so I tried to uh, depict that in the portrait. Um, in the portrait, you, when you see it, you will, uh, so the mayor is looking at the future, he's looking at the horizon, and there are a few symbols in the background, like for example, the walking bridge, I know that he's very proud of it, and also there are people uh, from different cultures in the background, and there is also um, a small bee and, <laughs> <laughs> and a butterfly because of Mohammed Ali's uh, quote that he said, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. <laughs> so, uh, so thank you so much. It's it's a pleasure to be here. I know she don't won't want me to do this, but I reckon, want to recognize Lonnie Ali, who's here, and Marilyn Jackson. Thank you for. I'll oh, get them, Lonnie. Thank you. So, Alex, you want to come up and up there? Penny, you want to help us? So then we'll unveil it, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. So. Okay, well, there's a few things going on in there, so I was asked to uh, explain those. So, first off, what do you think? Carlos do okay? So, we always believe in setting big goals for the administration, and we wanted a great piece of art to do that, and he did the best with what he had to work with, let's put it that way. And... Uh, uh, we tried to capture a bunch of things uh, in this uh, piece of art here in the portrait. And one of the things, of course, I noticed immediately when I became the mayor was all these folks are white, uh, white men in particular. And I was asked the other day, somebody said, uh, it's a young man that's a friend of mine, I said, do you think Louisville's ready for a black mayor? I said, well, absolutely it is. I mean, we just got to have the right candidate run. And whether it's a, uh, whatever skin color or whatever gender, that doesn't matter. But I wanted to distinctly make a comment about that. So you'll see, yes, I'm looking off into the future. The bridge is a symbol to the future. And then you'll see the figures to the side are people that aren't white. And you'll see women there as well. You'll see immigrants there. You'll see different uh, faith traditions being represented. And so that, to me, is what the future is of this city. White men will have a place. Uh, but it certainly does not need to be nearly as predominant as what it's been uh, in the past. The way they're grouped, uh, the one in the, in the furthest foreground represents the health, the city value of health. Uh, the center grouping represents the city value of compassion. And then the, the little kids up front that are playing with each other represent uh, the city value of lifelong learning. The little lucky horseshoe was get, uh, given to me by my grandfather, Marion Hardesty. I got that after he passed, and he loved to go out to the track, and so it represents, you know, good luck and good, for, good fortune as well. So, though, and then uh, Stephen Riley said, don't wear a tie, you're an entrepreneur, the entrepreneurial mayor, so that's why I don't have a tie on. Everybody else got a tie on. They're looking a little, they're looking white, old, and stiff. Okay, so I'm <laughs> not trying to look that way in this particular uh, portrait right here. So, uh, I hope that, you know, when people look at that, maybe they'll think about that stuff, but that's what's in there and certainly represented everything that uh, we've tried to stand for as a city, have big goals, involve everybody, love everybody with compassion, be an entrepreneur, and always look to the future. So I want to thank uh, Jessica Kincaid. Where is Jessica? Jessica is an incredible talent. She's our Metro Public Art Administrator. Uh, Carlos, we went through probably a half dozen or so 
iterations. It's interesting when you go back and forth on this and how these folks can change portraits when you're saying this color or this thing that's not working right. But Jessica's ability to kind of manipulate and pull all these things out and make a great uh, artist even think about th things in a different way, you just did a great job and I really, really appreciate what you did on this. Okay, Carlos, I'm just really glad again that you came to Louisville. Uh, we love you. Uh, you love the city back, and it's just a beautiful thing. And as you heard his story, his story is just the, the present of Louisville and the future of Louisville as well. And that's why it's so fitting that you represent this. Then, Alex, thank you for putting up with me for not just 12 years, but uh, 35 years. And uh, people say, oh, you, your wife must be so happy that you're going to be retiring out of mayor. I'm like, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> but it will give us more time to spend with Penny here and with Sophia, her little sister. So who can argue with that?